Hi, my name's Jake. I started my own exterior cleaning business around about two years ago now. And this is a checklist of six basic steps that I used to create the foundations of a successful business. Now these tips can be applied to any new business, whether it's outdoor cleaning, hair and beauty, mobile mechanic, anything really. I'm gonna assume that you're already passionate about whatever it is that you wanna create. And hopefully you've already run the numbers to see how much you need to spend to get set up and how much money you can potentially make. Also, it's good to get other people's perspective to make sure you're not crazy. A little bit of crazy is good, but it's good to get other people's opinions just to make sure you're not about to make a terrible decision. So first things first, you need to name your business. And I know this sounds like a very basic, obvious step, but you really wanna get this right the first time because it's quite difficult to change later on down the line once you've got everything else set up. This is gonna make the foundations for your logo, your social media presence, your marketing, your van sign writing. Everything else is built on top of this first step. I was pretty close-minded when I set up my business, thinking that pressure washing was gonna be the only service that I wanted to offer. But knowing what I know now and how seasonal the work is, it was a little bit naive really to think that that could sustain me throughout the whole year. Since then, I've had to expand my services just to be able to survive through the winter. And I think this can apply to a lot of businesses. You don't wanna box yourself in too much. Second thing on the list, you wanna make yourself a business email address. In the early days of your business, you're probably gonna make a few setup purchases from online retailers. You'll be creating trade accounts with suppliers to get trade discounts. And you might even wanna receive emails from potential customers as well. It literally takes two minutes, but it's worth doing early on because ideally you wanna keep your business emails separate from your personal ones. And I'll touch on this again a little bit later on. Number three, make your first spreadsheet. So you only need one early on and you're gonna to wanna to set this up when you're first starting out. Like I said, just you're gonna make lots of big purchases to begin with and you wanna make sure you're keeping track of all these and you're keeping the receipts. Cause I remember losing a bunch of my receipts for my first pressure washer that I bought and some of my other equipment as well. And I couldn't claim that back then on the tax return at the end of the year. I wasn't keeping track of anything within the first six months really and it, and it kind of hurt me about 12 months down the line. So your spreadsheet doesn't need to be fancy. It only needs a few columns. You'll thank yourself later on down the line that you've got it set up nice and early. So I'd start by having a column for the date, the name, and that can be the name of the supplier or whoever's paying you. And then you want an expenses column and an income column. And that's all you need for now. So number four, public liability insurance. If you intend to work around members of the public, it's likely you're gonna need public liability insurance. This can cover you for the cost of compensation claims made against you for injury or for damage to someone else's property. Shop around and try and find a provider who specializes in your industry. You might end up paying a little bit more, but it's likely that you'll have a more tailored level of cover that's more appropriate for your business. In the UK, your business can earn up to a thousand pounds before you legally need to declare it as a source of income. So number five on the list, earn your first thousand pounds. I'm gonna set you a target in the description, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Once you've done that, you can become a sole trader and then register for self-assessment. And now you're officially a recognized business. So now that you're a registered business, the last thing on the list, number six, is to open up a business bank account. Earlier I touched on keeping your personal stuff separate from your business. And the earlier you can get into this habit, the better. You wanna keep your phone number separate, your email address, vehicles, and most importantly, money. All of your income should be going directly into the business bank account and all of your expenses should be coming out of that account too. This makes things so much easier to track later on down the line. As soon as things start to cross over into your personal account and you're making purchases from your personal credit cards or debit cards, it's gonna be very confusing to know how much money you're making versus how much money you're spending. From now on, how much money you have personally is very different to how much money your business has and it's very important to make that distinction. I'm gonna condense these six steps into a checklist in the description below. I'm gonna set you some very manageable targets to reach over the next 90 days and I want you to come back and update us with your progress in the comments section of this video. And if you've already been inspired by watching my videos to start your own business, please let me know because I love reading about it all. So at this point, you're probably thinking, well, how the hell am I gonna earn a grand over the next 90 days? And I understand. And what you'll probably also do is start thinking of reasons why you can't start right now, or it's not a good time. I'll wait until after Christmas. I don't have enough money to start a business right now. I probably haven't got the time either. And those are just excuses. If you're waiting for the stars to align, it's never gonna happen because it's never gonna be the perfect time. And this checklist in the description is gonna help you prioritize and plan over the next 90 days and it's gonna incentivize you to make small incremental changes, which are gonna snowball. And as long as you remain consistent, you can make anything work. If you're committed and you're prepared to work hard, there's no reason you can't achieve anything. And I thoroughly believe that. And there's no incentive for me to make sure that you do well. So the only reason I'm making this video is because I've been through that process, I've been unhappy. And looking back on it now, I realized how simple the whole process was of going self-employed and starting to earn your own money and work for yourself and work on your own time 
and do something that you're actually enjoying. And so that's the only incentive for me is if I can inspire other people to take that leap. It's not even a leap, to be honest. I didn't lose anything by buying a pressure washer on the side and just doing jobs for friends and family. The only thing I risked was about 300 quid to get started and just my time on the evenings and weekends and stuff. And if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't have started, I wouldn't have my own business today. And if I'd have known that you could have done this when I left school, I'd have done this so much sooner, but instead I've been miserable in job after job. I've done retail work, I've done factory work, and you're just you're just a number. For me anyway, I wasn't I wasn't truly valued. I didn't feel value in anything I was doing. And if I was to leave, that'd have just replaced me with someone else. And to know that there's an alternative that's achievable to anyone who wants it, there's so much money out there to be made. And people are making a living doing all sorts of stuff these days. It's crazy how the internet has enabled so many alternative career paths for people. Also, don't get sucked into the trap of spending hundreds of pounds on people at Christmas as well. Just because everyone else is doing it, it doesn't mean you have to do it too. Just be sensible with your money. Make some sacrifices. People will understand. Let everyone know that this business is your main focus now and, and they'll understand. Try and reduce your direct debits, reduce your phone bill, anything unnecessary, just cut out and be ruthless as well. If you really want this, it's going to take sacrifice and hard work and consistency and start actually working towards one goal. There's no point in trying to do it all at once because you're going to get burnt out. So just do a little bit at a time, but remain consistent. Don't do a little bit this week and then nothing next week and then a little bit the week after. Do at least one thing every day that moves you closer towards your goal. And I promise you 90 days from this point, you'll look back and wonder why you didn't start this sooner. And for anyone who's thinking about starting up their own pressure washing business, don't wait until next year when the season starts again. Yes, the season's drawing to a close now, but there's so many other opportunities out there with things like gutter clearing. I think I'm going to start offering like a salt spreading service. I'm going to buy one of those salt trolleys and there's so many ways to make money. And if you're going to wait until February or March next year, you're going to be in a totally different financial position your your headspace is going to be different and you'll be thinking about other things and it probably won't be a priority anymore so just start right now because i promise you if you want this you won't regret it i didn't really know where i wanted this video to go but i think i've said everything i want to say now so good luck please comment if you need any help with anything i'll put some useful links in the description and uh, don't forget to catch the live stream monday nights half seven have a good one thanks for watching